It always feels like it's going on for so long. <laughs> Hey, Kate. Okay, so we have a, a couple of people and I know that, um, that we will uh, have more joining. I'm gonna go ahead and start because we can always replay this, but then that will, uh, you know, keep, uh, we'll keep everybody on time. So uh, thanks again for coming. I am Ellen Brown, and on normal days, you can find me at Glassroots in Newark, New Jersey, in the classroom, um, where I'm teaching adults and young people business principles to go along with our art um, classes. And Glassroots is a glass art studio in Newark, New Jersey, that works to ignite and build the cultural and economic vitality of our community through the glass arts. Since you can't visit us at the studio this, at this time, each day we're bringing activities to you through Facebook or Instagram and, of course, on our website. Please be sure to sign up for our email list to get the um, full, week of, a full week schedule ahead of time by sending your email address to info at glassroots.org and then follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. I want to add that we at Glassroots want to acknowledge what is going on in our country right now. At Glassroots, we intend to keep making our art in support of community and social justice, to hold programs that create economic opportunity, to tell our students that they can be agents of change, to open their eyes to opportunities, to rise up and fully embrace their potential. Just love that. Um, and it makes me proud. And today, um, I'm going to be talking about um, what is coming up for craft entrepreneurs in the next um, couple of months as we restart our um, businesses. I wanted to provide an opportunity to sort of rethink things and start off strong as we go into this next phase, whatever it's going to um, be. And I, as I say that, I know that many craft entrepreneurs did not stop um, their business during um, the stay-at-home orders, but things are going to be changing and there's some new opportunities that we can look at. So I'm going to discuss a few of those today. and. I'm really focusing on what you can do now to emerge strong. And just in case it doesn't read that way, let me put it this way too. Um, I'm never really sure about that. And I'm going to focus on three things. Um, your presentation online, how you present yourself online, and what can be done uh, differently, easily, quick, now. Um, how you pivot and think about other things that you might do but that are not too far afield from what you do already. And then finally, some new opportunities to promote your business and your work. Okay, so in presentation, what that really means is to take a look at your um, website. Again, I'm focusing on online, um, an online presence. If you have a big bricks and mortar shop, um, some of the things that I'm going to talk about will apply to that as well. Okay, I lost my feed. I hope that this is still okay. Okay, great. I don't know what happened, Kate, but anyway, off we go. Um, so I was talking about 
presentation, pivoting, and promotion. Those are going to be the three items that we look at today. And in terms of presentation, now is a really great time to spend uh, some time doing the things that take some time but don't take a lot of money, right? We have a little gap here where we can do that. And so in presentation, you can do some things um, super quick. One is to just review, review your website, pretend you're a customer, go through it, make sure that everything works well, that it's easy to use, that your um, people don't have to search for basic information that, that should be available to them. Maybe you want to um, reword some things. So here's my rubric for that one. Review, reword, and refresh, or even reimagine. I keep turning them both ways so that hopefully you can, they read one way or the other. Um, but so reviewing for just ease of use, that your buy buttons are colorful and big and uh, just not at all hard to find. So that's one thing. And just go through page by page. Maybe you can even grab some friends to help you with that. Um, Another thing, though, that is super easy to do and is often overlooked is to build up your trust factor as you're re-entering um, the marketplace. And the easiest way to do that is with third-party ver um, validation of what you do, also called testimonials and, com and uh, comments. But you, you want to have it in a way that really resonates with your customer and also where they see it. And it doesn't just have to be in one place. Um, it doesn't just have to be on your reviews page or your um, testimonials page. It's much better actually to go through those, just print them out, or I mean, I'm still old school. I am better when I'm looking at them on paper. But go through and find you know, like the three or four very best comments that you think would resonate with your customers. And then from that, get the one that you think is the absolute best and figure out a way to put it someplace where people see it almost as soon as they come in to your shop. Um, moving that up, it's kind of a, a, a shameless self-promotion, but it's not really you. It's something that somebody else said about you. So it makes it a little easier to do. Let me give you an example um, from some of the work that, that I do. Um, some of you know that I teach in, in libraries, um, and I continue to do that uh, virtually over the summer. And so I have two comments I want to read. Uh, one of them is a pretty traditional one that said, um, where did it go? Thank you so much. Wait. There we go. Thank you, Ellen, for the information, video, and wonderful workshop yesterday. Please keep us updated for your future workshops for the rest of the summer. We'd love to have you back. And then the name of the librarian and, and all of that. And that's a great um, comment, and I'll certainly use it. But here is the one that I really thought would resonate with librarians even more strongly where it's from a patron. It's from a young um, student who goes to the library and was a part of a um, um, hand-stitching, trendy uh, class that I do. And she said, Miss Ellen, which is what they usually call me, your patch ideas are giving me so many ideas about my own jeans. I don't want to buy patch jeans from the stores anymore. I want to personalize my jeans now all by myself. And so I use that little clip in my about section and um, as part of the intro on my website, just to let people know this is a place where your patrons will experience discovery. And that's, I know from um, working with librarians that that's something that they really care about. So look at your comments and think about that, okay? Uh, a third thing that you can um, concentrate on, and you can do that today, by the way. You don't have to waste time. Um, a third thing that you can think of is upselling in your um, website. So you want to look at the 
products that you have and think which kind of things might work together or that you could promote one when another one sells. It's really the equivalent of, how about, would you like fries with that? You know, when somebody buys something, um, you, uh, a necklace, let's say that you have a craft business and you make jewelry, they buy a necklace, you offer them earrings um, or, you know, other kinds of combinations that can easily result in an additional sale for hardly any effort. And once you have it in place, it can happen over and over again. You don't have to keep um, designing it. And um, that can also be a um, buy one and then you get the second one for you know 25% off or something like that. It's just extra revenue coming in from that same sale. So give that a try. And then the last point to look at in terms of the presentation is to take a look at your um, contact list. Take a look at the emails that you, email addresses that you can get from a re, just as a result of having your um, shop, people who have purchased from you, people who have favorited you, um, and create a database that, from that if you can. I think that email is um, very underrated uh, and easy to use source once you get that database set up. Um, <laughs> oh, but I always want the prize. I get what you're saying. Um, but once you get the database set up, it is a powerful tool because it's always in your control. You don't have to worry about algorithms changing. You don't have to worry about um, some other kind of um, arbitrary thing that um, the big selling platforms do. When you have your own email list, you can contact your um, followers with inside information, with um, you know short videos. People love to see the making process. Just to develop that relationship and that trust with them that will lead to more sales as you go forward. So these are some of the things that you can get into place as you're um, beginning to emerge into back into the market. Okay, um, the second part is on pivoting. And pivoting may be the most powerful, um, I'm looking for my, there we go, pivot. Um, the most powerful part of all, because pivoting doesn't mean change everything. It means you can take a look at what you do. Uh, my doorbell is about to ring, so I can see somebody walking up. I'm not gonna answer it, but you'll hear it. Um, so you can take a look at all of the products that you have and think more creatively, more broadly about what things you can do with what you have there already. So, um, for example, many craft entrepreneurs um, have a very strong process that they go through. They really understand the process well. Um, think about your shop drawings. Could your shop drawings or your um, sketches, could those become coloring book pages? Could they be made into a uh, puzzle? There are companies that do that where they will take your um, drawing or your image and make it into a puzzle. People are at home now, they're looking for different things to do. Think about something like that. And I think also really recognize the fact that people are at home um, much more than they had been. They are online much more than they had been. They're accustomed to doing things virtually now that a couple of months ago would have been a big production to get them to even uh, believe that this was a thing that they could learn virtually. So all of that um, um, foundation has been laid for you. So let's use it, right? So you've got potentially new customers um, who uh, are also looking for things for their um, kids to do. So. Think about the pivoting in three kind of categories. Kids, kits, 
and COVID. And I'm going to talk about COVID. It feels a little, you know, a little um, sleazy to raise it this way, but there are some changes that are um, going to last for a long time that if you think about it now, you can strengthen your business um, going forward. So I was talking about coloring book pages or puzzles. Those are great ways that you might be able to pivot some of your product to respond to kids. Um, another way to do it, can you teach what you do? Maybe you can do virtual um, classes for um, their platforms, and I'll give you a couple of them in a minute, but also summer camps that want to offer some of their activities virtually, even though now it looks like some of them will be able to reopen for the summer. But um, if you are able to show your process for making something that is uh, cool and maybe simplified, you can um, I'm sorry, I'm just like preoccupied because of the person at my door. Um, and cool and simplified, it can appeal to uh, younger people too. And you don't have to simplify it totally, um, and you can have it appeal to adults. There are platforms, one is called Podia, P-O-D-I-A, P like Peter, O-D-I-A, like Podium. Um, which is a place where you can do online teaching for adults and kids. Another one is Teachable. Take a look at these and see if what you are doing, you might tweak a little bit, record a little bit, and then offer as a product. People are so much more accustomed now to doing things where they, they want to work with their hands. They've experienced some of the satisfaction of doing that. Uh, as a result of being home, and now they're looking for more and more things that they can apply that to. So, um, and teaching, you don't have to be totally expert, so don't let that paralyze you or hold you back. If you know, you know what you make, right, and you are just demonstrating that, breaking down the steps, and exercising patience. Those are the really key things about teaching. You don't have to know the whole of everything, right? And, and uh, people ask you questions and you can come back to them. You know, you, you don't have to feel like uh, you have to be the professor. So that's another option. Then, and, um, kits. So think about what you make, what your, your products are. And then you probably have relationships with your suppliers that have been ongoing for a while. Maybe you can create kits that include uh, uh, what's used to make your product that you can provide to people. They're loving, the market is loving right now, purchasing um, of all kinds. Now, if what you make is, um, uh, uses very complicated tools or you know more exotic supplies or is dangerous of course that is another question but maybe there's something that you can still simplify and make up a kit and put that on your website doesn't take if you if you've worked with websites by now you know that it's really the photography the description and getting it up there at the right price Right? So um, think about that. And then in terms of COVID, have in your mind some of the changes that you know are going to be lasting. Um, I, you know, I think everybody who could make masks started sewing masks. Um, and I do think that there's still a business opportunity there, particularly for customized masks. If you like to do custom work, um, that, that that will continue, but there's a host of other things too. Uh, my son uh, just got notice from his company that he's going to be working from home now through the end of 2020. So that's another six months that he's going to be home and they are, uh, his company is giving them a small budget to outfit their home office so that they're not sitting on their kitchen chairs when they should be sitting 
and something more ergonomic and that their light works and things like that. So there are people who are used to um, being online who are now going to be able to more of a budget than they would otherwise have. What kind of things can you offer there? Um, if you have a sewing business, can you make um, desk organizers? Can you make wall organizers? Can you make different kinds of files? The things that people don't have at home, hey, don't have at home. Um, and if now they're going to be creating their own space, maybe they want something that is a little different than what they get at Staples, you know? Something that you can particularly respond to. So think a little long term, look at the things that you have. Um, if you are making, um, you know, like little uh, um, jewelry holders or glass boxes or something like that, could they be a little bit bigger and, uh, or mosaic and sit on the desk and make people feel, you know, just happier? So those are things that you can think about in terms of pivoting your work. In different ways. Um, promoting is getting your name out there in the form of advertising um, and getting people to know that you exist. Right, so your email list is one, uh, create that. You can turn people who have worked with you uh, or had a business transaction with you in the past a little bit into ambassadors to share their experience, the products that you make. Um, and for that, you know, maybe there's a discount coupon or something like that. So, uh, and word of mouth is always the strongest, just like when we're talking about finding your best comment, that's the same as word of mouth and bringing it up. Um, but there's also something that's happening in the market right now that we should be paying attention to. And um, you know those ads that keep coming through on Facebook ads and Google ads and the rest, right? And I have annoying in the middle because that's how I think of them. But the question is, how do you make them not annoying? And I know from um, experience over the last couple of months to provide the right product to um, the right not annoying to get those um, ads. It's more like, ah, just what I needed. And the thing that's happening in the market is that um, Facebook ads and Google ads, which are normally kind of dominated by um, much larger companies, those uh, in terms of ad purchases and, and sending out ads, those companies are kind of regrouping right now, those retailers, and thinking about how they're going to continue their their business in the whatever the new normal is. And so it gives the smaller um, businesses, this, uh, the craft businesses, a chance to um, look at ways to use these ads where the ads are actually going to be a little bit less expensive because there's less demand for them. The big retailers have stopped purchasing at the volume that they were purchasing before. So it's an opening there. And then the way that you get it to not be annoying is to really think who is the most ideal customer for the product that you offer. So this this is a little bit of marketing 101, right? Where you're trying to find your niche down. The more that you can really um, find the smallest number of people who would love to have your product, the less expensive it will be to buy. Um, oh, what's the word I want? You'll have lots of um, layer up 
to make a, a Facebook ad or a Google ad. It won't be broad. It'll be a very narrow, um, a very narrow description. So, for example, you might want to have um, people who, um, uh, let's say, you wanted people who fish, right? You make a you make a um, piece of jewelry that could be converted to uh, something that a fly fisher fisherman or fisherwoman would wear, right? So you don't just want to have um, people with disposable income who like fish, right? You want to talk, look at people who subscribe to fishing magazines and um, have list fishing as one of their main hobbies and um, love the outdoors and layer all of that together. Every time you put on another descriptor, it makes your price lower. It doesn't seem like it should, but it does because there are not that many people who want all those descriptions, right? But it makes you get right to your market. And that fly fisher person who sees your ad that uh, has got some beautiful piece of thing like that, or it can be used as a fly, I don't know, I'm making it up, but they're going to be the one who wants to buy that and who wants to tell people in their forums and things like that about it. So it's a different way of thinking. It's a unique opportunity that this offering us, and we just want to make sure that you take advantage of it. So those are the things that I wanted to cover this morning. Um, I hope it's been useful, and I think that we will be repeating these. So if you didn't catch everything, it'll be up again. And as I close, I just am looking for my closing one to say that at Glassroots, we are really um, so thankful, actually, that we're able to offer these programs to the general community free of charge. And we would love, we, uh, love to do that. We want to continue to do that. If you're able to support us, we would love that as well. You can go to glassroots.com, and it's just one click to, to donate. Um, just know that we would really appreciate it, and we hope that we'll see you tomorrow at our next event. Okay, thanks so much, and bye, everybody.